Welcome back, everyone, to live coverage of DreamHack Denver. Riley Knight joined by Noah Walker. And it's a great pleasure to have your company as we round out our coverage of the Swiss portion. Day number one, the format is modern. And we don't want to waste too much time, Noah. We've got magic to show people. So let's jump in to the deck lists that will be put on display here for your viewing pleasure with, our, so with some of our remaining undefeated players, one of whom is Chandler Cox on Golgari Yorgmoth. This deck's been around for a while since Yorgmoth was printed in Modern Horizons. Tell us a little bit about what, what this list is trying to do, Noah. Yeah, I mean, it's just a classic creature combo deck of the format. You mm -hmm. uh, apply pressure early with, you know, all, all, all these little creatures, Young Wolf, uh, Wall of Roots, Delighted Halfling, uh, make some good mana. Just really try to set up an, some nice value turns with Yawgmoth and, and Young Wolf. Um, you can kind of go infinite so to speak, and just draw a bunch of cards with that little combo. Uh, but really, it's just like a creature deck that leverages these, uh, the, the Yawgmoths and and the Court of Callings, the Gris, to, to kind of make your smaller creatures a lot more impactful. Agatha's Soul Cauldron, the, the biggest addition to this deck, just kind of have extra Yawgmoths. Uh, I think a really, really cool one to see here. But I think what we're really, really seeing and like why this deck is one of the most popular decks this weekend is that with the banning of Fury, uh, this deck gets a lot, lot better in mm. in the modern metagame. You know, you, yeah. you don't really get blown out as much uh, for applying pressure early with, with these smaller creatures. So I think that's why we've really, really seen an uptick of, of Yawgmoth. Yeah, creature decks are a lot more... Uh, uh, a, lot, a lot more... You can have there are a lot. There's a bigger a bigger range of starts you can have with a with a creature deck that doesn't just get completely punished by uh, by fury these days. On the other side of the table here in the hands of Andrew Upton is Team of Rhinos. We've already seen the Team of Rhinos list on the battlefield uh, today, or just last round, in fact. But uh, that was the full on uh, leyline version, whereas this one uh, a little more traditional by the look of things. It's just the classic Team of list. Yep, this one just kind of deciding. I really like my. Tide Binders, my Merc Tide Regents. I want to keep my deck nice nice and uh, blue. Uh, you know, just having... I guess it might not have that many extra blue cards for, for these Force Negations, but it, it has less dead cards. You know, you, you can't really draw a Ley Line later in the game. Uh, your your deck is much more cut cut and dry, so to speak, and just a really solid uh, Team of Rhinos game plan. It has less dead cards now. I, I'm pretty sure it's got three dead yeah. cards. Ah... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, and the crowd goes mild. Uh, let's jump in to the uh, let's jump into the match here. Andrew Upton facing off against Chandler Cox, Team of Rhinos against Golgari Yorgmoth, and uh, Golgari Yorgmoth kind of reminds me of the old birthing pod lists, right? Sorry, let me just let me just uh, get my walking frame and pop in a Werther's original here as I talk about the ancient history of magic. But um, this is the this is that sort of that that combo creature toolbox type strategy that has hung around the fringes of the format for a very long time even after the bo the banning of birthing pod um but it's a deck that, that can attack from multiple angles while still having a combo finish yeah exactly orcish bowmasters of course a really key inclusion from uh the the lord of the ring set as indeed is in delighted halfling uh not so much in this matchup i don't know how much it'll be a factor here especially as it gets uh, dismembered but um, Delighted Halfling making Yorgmoth uncounterable, in addition to things like Shieldred, Hepatra, are uh, really, really important against uh, counterspell heavy decks. Yeah, and, and I mean, even, even in a matchup like this, you know, it's pretty decent against Subtlety. Um, I guess, wait, no, Subtlety chooses it, so it's not actually counter. Yeah, I don't think Subtlety, Subtlety doesn't counter anything. It just, it, it, um, it puts it on, on top or bottom. Yeah. So but, uh, only really, you know, like the the one copy of Mystical Dispute and stuff like that. But yeah, again, you know, against these like blue white decks with hmm. four copies of Counterspell or these blue red decks, it's really impactful. All right, Wall of Roots and another Wall of Roots and a Young Wolf coming in now. And back to Andrew up to now. Turn three, the key turn for the Rhinos deck. Does he have it? Yes, he does. Shardless Agent. We'll find us a copy of Crashing Footfalls, presumably. Was that dead and gone? We were talking about before. And Crashing Footfalls. Chandler has a quick look at what Andrew's working with. And now two four fours to deal with. So what's the plan for the uh, for the Yorgmoth player here? Yeah, I mean, if you're Chandler, you're not the happiest with the way that this game is playing out. Um, 
really just hoping to to get a Yogmoth going soon. Um, he he's not under like the craziest amount of pressure. You know, having this wall of roots, being able to shut down one of the rhinos is, is actually sems the bleeding quite considerably. Uh, but he he needs to to have some something good going on in the next couple of turns. Otherwise, Andrew will just take over the game. Yes, indeed. And at the moment, Andrew doing exactly what his list wants to do. Early, some early disruption, um, sort of cheating on the uh, on the mana value of uh, of cards like Fire and Ice, Dismember, Dead Gone, uh, to stick to the stringent requirements of Cascade lists everywhere. And we're going to see a Wall of Roots just chump blocking a Rhino here to save some damage. Oh dear, and a Violent Outburst as well, just to punish this uh, this block even further, because of course those Rhinos have Trample. Chandler have a response here? Maybe something like a uh, a court of calling. Always huge when it comes to Wall of Roots because you don't need to tap Wall of Roots to for it to generate mana. So you can sort of double dip with your uh, with your cords and uh, and a Wall of Roots. Kind of a sneaky play here from Andrew. It seemed like at first he was considering attacking with the Shardless Agent, and then he decided not to. Which I don't know if that signaled Chandler that he didn't actually have the violent outburst. Like maybe maybe an attack with everything. Then like Chandler considers a little bit more. Like, do I want to use my wall roots to block this four four? Uh, but on the other end of it, you know, Andrew kind of missing out on an opportunity to uh, get in three damage with the Charlotte's agent because the the other copy of wall roots wouldn't have been able to effectively block it. So it was like mm -hmm. it was. Kind of, I think that was a pretty cool like. My like very small interaction that just happened there, though. So, Yorgmoth, Rand Physician comes out thanks to the Court of Calling. And as you can see, those Wall of Roots uh, on double duty being tapped and also generating mana uh, with their activated ability. So, Yorgmoth <clears throat> comes down. And I guess as a 2 4 would have been able to block the Shardless Agent regardless of the Violent Outburst there. So, Andrew not throwing it away for no reason. Uh, Young Wolf comes back. And uh, with the Yorgmoth activation, that is. And a minus one, minus one counter put on the Rhino. So does that mean that that wall will survive? Yes, it does. Um, the Water Fruit's currently a 0-4. And the Rhino but, has been shrunk down to a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, no, but, but it has plus one, plus zero. Oh, yeah. Plus one, plus zero. Oh, yeah. So he's got to sacrifice something else as well. Yeah, so he's, lo he's losing something here. You can see Andrew just really giving it to that gum. My goodness. <laughs> and Young Wolf now. Sacrificed. The minus one, minus one counter put on the wolf. So it still comes back. This is the little loop that we were talking about. And we'll see it sacrificed again. Undying means that the, the Rona gets a minus one, minus one. So trading the other Wall of Roots with a bunch of counters on it for the Wall of Roots that doesn't have counters on it and also saving some damage in the uh, in the process takes four. Chandler down to 11. The Wall of Roots lives to tell the tale, as does the Young Wolf. Back to Chandler now. Untapping with Yorgmoth, never good news for opponents of this list and with a full grip as well. So now's the chance for Chandler to get ahead. A Blood Artist in hand? Yeah, Blood Artist, a huge one here. Really a uh, good opportunity for Chandler to gain some life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it kind of offsets the the one life every time for, for this little young wolf combo. So he can kind of go off, so to speak, second, and, and draw a bunch of cards. A second young wolf ends the game, right? A second yeah. undying creature? Yes, it does. Yeah, because if you've got two undying creatures and a Blood Artist and a, a Yorgmoth, you can sacrifice each of the undying creatures one after the other, put the minus one, minus one counter on the one that you didn't sacrifice and go off that way. And Chandler needs something, right? Facing down, what is it, 14 power of rhinos on the other side of the battlefield? A bit spooky if you're Chandler here, for sure. Like, it does look like he has a lot of cards in hand, but it also looked like a lot of those cards didn't necessarily do very much right now. Uh, I, th I think I saw an Orcish Bowmasters, which is not horrible here. You know, it's a lot of bodies to, to get good yeah. value out of this Yawgmoth. Um And and w along with the Blood Artist, you know, that's going to be a, a lot of extra cards as well. Or sorry, a lot of extra 
uh, life as well. So there's the Orcish Bowmasters, as we say. One damage on the 2-2 Rhino. And amasses an Orc army. We'll see what's next for him. Does he play the Blood Artist? Try to buff that life total a little bit because we can imagine a lot of creatures are going to die in the next turn. Hopefully Chandler doesn't go the same way as these creatures, however, wanting to, <laughs> want to keep himself in it. Yeah, I would be surprised not to see the Blood Artist coming down here. Uh, he doesn't really have too many other options in his hand. And like as you said, Riley, these couple of life points are super, super, super vital at the stage of the game, so... Let's not forget as well, Andrew Upton is on 13. So if you can string together enough death triggers, enough enough uh, blood artist triggers, Andrew has to start worrying about his life total as well because now Chandler's stable on 10 with this blood artist. Oh, look at that. Ooh, oh, he drew oh, the how wolf. is that for How he is that drew for the wolf. The Oh, my goodness. No. Fox snatching the win out of Thin air. Oh, I'll sacrifice this water, I guess. Let's let's just have a look. No, let's have a look and see what's on top of the library. Oh, it's a one mana card that wins me the game, just like Whoa, that. How the... about that? I mean, I mean, that was just a testament to the deck. It, he looked. I wouldn't say he looked super far behind or anything, but you know, the the four fours were putting a lot of pressure on him. Without the the cord there for the Ogmoth, the game it basically ends. He had a, a handful, a bunch of lands. He was like, "Hey, look, another young wolf. I win." So. Perfect. Yep, went digging for it and was rewarded for it. I think he was considering maybe uh, the 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 Orcish Bowmaster play indicates that he probably was looking to to do some digging, right? Mm, mm, um, uh, hoping to find uh, hoping to find that extra, and the fact that he also used the Wall of Roots mana early left up the the green source. So he he clearly was a man with the plan. And look, well done to Chandler. Full credit for that victory. That was a that was a very very uh, a very deftly won game of magic, realizing that that was the turn that he had to to spend trying to find a way to end things. Anyway, we're going to move to game number two now and see if Chandler can continue his uh, his onslaught here, or will Andrew Upton be able to dig in the heels, plonk out some rhinos, and uh, and push through an early lethal before Chandler can really get his engines going? Let's find out. Game number two here at DreamHack Dallas. Riley Knight are joined by Noah Walker here, walking you through this match and indeed this tournament format is modern and it's a great pleasure to have your company as we continue our coverage thirty thousand dollars going to whoever ends up in first there are two world championship invitations uh 32 pro tour invitations and a bunch of entire weekend to enjoy uh the very best the modern format has to offer shuttle sergeant on turn three no the perfect start here for andrew upton Hey, second first, same as the first, you know, just three lands, Shardless Agent, some Rhinos. That's exactly what you want. All right, so 10 power on the battlefield on turn number three. That's exactly what Team Rhinos is trying to do. Didn't have to leverage any early disruption as well. A very slow start for Chandler Cox, whose deck is full of one and two drops. But yeah, I don't really... Hand is full of hot garbage by the look of things. Oh, oh how about this one? Oh, yeah, I was right. thinking, like, what sort of hands is is Chandler willing to keep in this matchup that don't really have a turn one or two proactive play? Mm -hmm. And I guess it was just, like, exactly, like, some, you know, Maelstrom Pulse, like, Yawgmoth value hand, which yep. doesn't sound horrible to me in the, in this matchup. But, you know, you don't want to give the Team Renos deck forever either, so. Well, the first Maelstrom Pulse is going to deal with those two token uh, token creatures, but... He'll have to find a second answer now as a second copy of Shardless Agent comes down. Chandler will be able to play Yorgmoth next turn, should he choose to, but it's a lot of damage that he's going to have to absorb if he does so. Eight trampling damage. Okay, finds a delighted halfling. That would have been a very welcome turn one play here for him. But does have the lands and, and the spells. It's just, just sort of playing a slower game here, which is not really what the Yorgmoth deck always wants to do. You're definitely not a very oh, legion's cool. end legion's end there's a name i've not heard in a long time it's going to get rid of those rhinos as well and uh yeah look the other crashing footfalls in hand but is, isn't obviously is not hit by the uh by the legion legion's end but ordinarily we've got four copies of crashing footfalls in uh 
in Rhino's decks, right? So so Chandler still has to worry about another one that might be lurking in there. Yep, totally. Yeah, Andrew's list has four. So there is still the opportunity, you know, if Andrew draws you know, one of these Cascade cards to be able to deploy some more Rhinos. Dead on the Halfling here. Means that Chandler won't have access to an extra mana from that Dork next turn. In come the, uh, the Shardless Agents now. An attack for four takes Chandler down to 14. He's done a good job keeping the Rhinos at bay, but now has to find his, uh, his way back into this game. Again, drawing these cards in all the wrong order. Finds the, uh, the Chalice, but the most, for, for the most part, the damage has been done. Two of those, uh, those Crashing Footfalls have already been cast. Going to cast it anyway. I mean, why not, right? Yeah. I mean, he does know that Andrew has the Footfalls in hand as well so like it kind of does shut off that one from just being hard cast if like andrew decides on a later turn that he wants to suspend it so it's not horrible here but like as you said riley chandler was really hoping for this chalice a little bit earlier and here's yorgmoth ran position as well andrew upton nothing nothing for the whole turn wow yeah Surprising turn, uh, there's honestly. There's a Shana's Tidebinder in hand for him. Hoping to get some good value out of that, I would imagine. And the Lorian Reveal to go and fetch an island. Goes and grabs a uh, breeding pool? Or is that a uh, is that a hedge maze? I think it might be hedge maze. Hedge maze. I mean, that's like just even more value for this Yorin revealed as well, right? Like, yeah, it mm -hmm. could already search up the uh, one of the triomes that you could cycle, but being able to just search up a surveil land, like these surveil lands are, are honestly really impressing me. I wouldn't say that, you know, when I thought of them initially in modern, that they were just like a shoe in or whatever, you know, like just thinking about it with all these fetch lands, I would think like, yeah, I can imagine that most decks could afford to at least play one, but mm -hmm. they've just been so, so impressive. Yeah, yeah, really good. And a lot of decks are playing too. Often it's just the Thundering Falls and the Hedge Maze and these uh, and these Cascade lists. So definitely a card to keep an eye on. We see Violent Outbursts availed to the bin. Back over to Chandler now. Three cards in in, uh, in hand for him. Does have the Yorgmoth out, seemingly uncontested. So that's good news for our, uh, our Yorgmoth player here. And it's just going to ship. So not a lot of business here for Chandler. Yeah, weirdly unimpressive board for having a Yawgmoth on it. Looks like Chandler just has another copy of Yawgmoth in his hand. So not too great. Luckily, they are, or sorry, uh, he is keeping these these Charlotte's agents at bay mm. pretty easily. Uh, you know, Yawgmoth just being a 2-4 body. So I like this from Andrew. Plays the, uh, suspends the, the crashing footfalls and being like, yep, yeah, I'll... I'll deal with that Chalice of the Void, but that's future Andrew's problem. And I yeah, hate that exactly. Guy. One day, one day. All right, what have we got going on here? Court of Calling? Yeah, it looks like a court for one, probably just to get a young wolf going. Mm -hmm. All right, a good start. Another young wolf uh, is not going to be enough. Needs, well, obviously, you'd be able to draw a bunch of cards for Chandler, but needs, needs the Blood Artist or uh, another effect like it in order to. Uh, to seal the deal. A Patra wouldn't be too bad here to clog up the board. All right. Young Wolf sacrificed. But there's the there's the tide binder. Andrew was really biding his time when it came to casting this card. And which Okay, I think he stifled the Yorgmoth trigger, yes. Because the young wolf comes back, doesn't get to draw a card, and it the, the Yorgmoth is now just a 2-4. Yep. Uh, really nice play there from Andrew, kind of shutting off some value for Chandler. Luckily for Chandler, he does have another Yorgmoth. You know, he decided to just play it, but... But Andrew being really judicious there and in, in when he deployed that Tide Binder, that was, that was really clever stuff from him to make sure that he got as, as much value as possible. Yeah, great, great play from Andrew for sure. Ooh, looks like Chandler just picked up a, a Shelly. 
Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. All right, here she is. The apocalypse. She arrives. Now Andrew's on the clock. This is going to be a nice little buffer here for Chandler. As we tick down the rhinos towards them being counted by the chalice of the void. Back over to Chandler. Yeah, the fact that Tishana's Tidebinder can do like the triggers from from Sheldred as well is just so crazy. That card is. Because like I was yeah, wondering, like, like I saw Chandler going like, oh, like trigger, trigger. And then and then Andrew being like, yep, it's fine. And then I was like, wait, Chandler was actually worried for a second. He's like, uh, please, like, can I trigger this Sheldred? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Tidebinder is, uh, is is one of the best stifles I think we've ever seen. Yeah, impressive guard. Because stifle can be really backbreaking, right? Like you stifle a fetch land, you stifle a key trigger or something, or a key ability at, at a certain time. And but that but that's it. It's one and done. Like you don't get any more value out of it. Whereas the Tidebinder comes down and just completely negates a card once it's been played. Look at this Yorgmoth. Like you're not playing it because you want a, a four mana two four. But that's all it is now. Although two mana four two four, that's uh, it's blocking pretty pretty nicely here. Hmm, this is a really interesting attack. I, I'm I'm curious to see what Andrew is representing exactly. Maybe dead gone, in addition mm -hmm. to something like a violent outburst, because the 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 attack with the the shardless agent. I don't. Really, I, I'm full. I'm fully figured out what what exactly he's cooking, but I know that he's cooking something. Let him cook. Let him cook, man. Let's find out. Let's see what uh, Chef Andrew serves up to us on uh, on a silver platter here. So as it is now, the shardless agent is being eaten up, yum yum, by the uh, by the Yorg moth. So fire. Two damage to the Yorg moth. Trades. Young wolf dies. Yorg moth also dies because of the two damage. How good that was for Andrew, to be honest. Yeah, it didn't look very great. No, a three for two. A three mm. for two when Chandler didn't care about his Yorgmoth as well. Because it was already shut off, yeah. Yeah. And now this uh this Shieldred will truly large and in charge. And Andrew Upton's life total is not going to stay at this level uh for too much longer. Neither of these life totals will, in fact, as we see Shieldred get ready to attack. Thinking, considering <laughs> it, in she comes. Andrew down to 13. And Chandler now deploys the second Yorgmoth. And yeah, a little, uh, little nod from Andrew. That's a real spanner in his works. <laughs> and then a Dryad Arbor. And there's the Endurance to take care of Chandler's graveyard. Yeah, not entirely relevant. No, it's got a response to an undying trigger, but uh, it's it doesn't a three, do a four. lot here. Yeah, exactly. All right. We need an answer to that chalice. Yeah, Got to get there. We need a lot. We need an answer to the Shelly. We need lobby. an answer to the chalice. <laughs> we need... More or less every single non-lane card on Chandler's side of the battlefield needs an answer from Andrew here. Yeah, it's not not a great spot. Even this Dryad Arbor looking kind of juicy, honestly. Pendlehaven, mm -hmm. pump that up. Yeah. Uh, it's a threat. It's a real threat. You can't even attack with this Mood of Vault. It's like completely just outclassed. So the attack with a 3-4 here. And I think Chandler just takes it, right? There's no need to mess around with double blocks or risking your creatures or anything. Okay. Has the answer. There's the beside you. Gets rid of the chalice. That means Chandler can go and get a land by way of recompense. Yeah, I mean, that's a good step one, right? Like, like we need to answer, you know, Chandler's permanence. We, we got one of them out of there. We got two turns waiting for this Crashing for Falls to come in. Like, if if we can find some answer to the Shieldred, this game uh, is not done yet. Okay, and a Shardless Agent as well is going to find Crashing Footfalls, the fourth and final copy here. Two in the bin, one on the battlefield, or one in the Exile Zone, I guess, technically speaking. And then one should still be in the uh, in the library. Supposedly. Get... Somewhere. Oh, Somewhere. There it is. Yep. Chandler's going to have a quick look at the cards that were, uh, the, were exiled to get a, a sense of what had been brought in. Flame of Arnor, I saw that had been brought in. 
uh, the dismember still in. Well, no, sorry, there's a flame of vinyl in the main deck, so maybe yeah. it's the main deck copy. He probably did in the other two copies, so I'm, I'm I, I'd be. You think so? Surprised if not. Nice. Just yeah, dealing five good. damage to a creature, pretty, pretty excellent in this matchup. So, also destroy target artifact, super relevant against the chalice uh, that comes out of the board from your opponents as well. Yeah, totally. And then they also just have Agassiz Soul Cauldron in their main deck, so a lot of uh, value in that one. All right, Kalni Garden makes a zero one. Wait, I did not even like for some reason it yeah. just never crossed my mind how nasty of a combo Shieldred is with Yagmoth. Just all these draws and and, and oh, because life. You draw, some, draw many extra cards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's that's what the Yagmoth deck needs, right? Ways to offset the life loss from its activated ability. And uh, yeah, yeah, Shieldred certainly does that. Certainly does that. And we can see here Chandler now shrinking down the Rhinos very deliberately, I think in order to uh, mean that they can be blocked by uh, by Yorgmoth here. Chandler already has played the Kalni Garden, unable to play another land for the turn. And delighted Halfling to play. The mana for, for for that coming from the Dryad Arbor, I believe, before it was sacrificed. Correct. Yeah. For a second, I was wondering too. I was like, he just doesn't want to tap, but no, he he already used some mana this turn. Yep. And so now another delighted halfling cycled off of the other one that was uh, was sacrificed, and again we're wow. just seeing Chandler slowly but surely shrink down all of uh, Andrew's creatures here. I mean, this is a nice little combo for sure. Yeah. Oh, and he's proliferating. Ooh. Oh, sure. That was what, and that's why we saw the, the the counters spread out across all of these creatures to get as much value from them as possible. Wow. This is actually a really, really, really well played turn here from Chandler. Not often that we see the proliferate ability. Hey, two black mana, discard a card, proliferate. Doesn't happen all that often, but when it does. I would like to see an attack with Shieldred for sure, just because I think one of the only ways that we lose this game as Chandler is giving Andrew too much time. Mm -hmm. um, we, we're not really under too much pressure, you know, as, as the Ogmoth player here for, from, from the sports state that we just kind of got really, really low. You know, uh, it's just two 1-1 one, one Rhinos, uh, an, an 0-1 Endurance, and then this Shardless Agent, as well as like, you know, possibly this Muta Vault. So he's not really facing too much pressure. And he kind of wants to close out the game. So I really would have liked to see an attack from the Shieldred. Right. So, Mutafault. Was that activating itself? No. Or was this for mana? Yep. So he activated the Mutavolt so that he could get two uh, modes with his Flame of Anar. He also chose the draw two cards mode. Oh, true. Right. Okay. Yes. Playing the the, the Flame of Anor there for, uh, for, 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 for both modes. And getting rid of the Shieldred. Key. Yeah, that was the best possible draw in his deck for sure. He needed he needed to kill that Shelly for sure. Yep. And now Chandler just down to this Yorgmoth. Although the, the board is not as impressive as you might think at first blush from Andrew Upton. Those are minus one, minus one counters on all of his creatures. And so he has a bunch of one ones and a zero one, although that will change once the second or the fourth copy, I should say, of Crashing Footfalls uh, is put on the stack. And what can Chandler come up with this turn? He needs something to put himself back into this. And now he may be regretting that, not attacking with that shield now that it's off the battlefield. All right. I get the Soul Cauldron. Decent. I'll give it, I'll give the, the Cauldron a decent here. You know, he, he does have some stuff he can do with it. He doesn't really have too many creatures though. So it's really just going to, I think, act more of a, put some extra counters on, on this Yagmoth. All right, and putting a plus one, plus one counter on the Yorgmoth, exiling the... What was the card that was exiled? I didn't get a good look at it. Um, I'm, I'm, I didn't either, honestly. Doesn't matter. In any case, proliferate, uh, the proliferate ability, cleaning up Andrew's board, and now Yorgmoth, look at this. Yorgmoth's been hitting the gym, dude, getting those... Yoked, yeah. He's, he's yoked. He's absolutely yoked. Getting in for four. He's actually just bigger than these rhinos, too. Like, that is just a scary Yorgmoth. 
And so that is, I guess, an answer to the uh, the rhinos that are coming down here. Yorgmoth can just uh, sit back and block them. Yeah, I mean, Andrew has these dead gons. He he could try to leverage, like, maybe he just has to go on this Yogmoth just because it's so big. Like, I feel like that is probably a better a use than attacking and then deading. But also, he doesn't really want to give Chandler, who has shown, you know, that he doesn't have very much to do with his mana, uh, a, a clean play on this turn. So a little bit of a difficult turn here if you're Andrew. I don't even know if Chandler can necessarily attack with Yagmoth either, though, into the face of these rhinos. Like he, he, he may be good. Actually, he could, he could force lethal. So, because he can proliferate, yeah. So attacking for onboard lethal, double block. Oh, and a fatal push as well out of nowhere. The dead gone will mean the Yorg... Oh, hang on one second. Can't you... No, okay. I think he's got a second Yorgmoth in... Oh, no. It's... Oh, he's bouncing it, bouncing it, bouncing it. Okay. Yeah. He's not deading it. He's goning it. Exactly. He's also got the Soul Cauldron, though, so he could he could put a, a plus one counter on, on the Yorgmoth if if Andrew tried to go for, for the dead as opposed to the gone, so... All right. Halfling now. Delighted Halfling joins the Exile Zone along with what I think is a Dryad Arbor. Makes sense. Yeah, Chandler just not really caring, I guess, what he's exiling with the Agatha Soul Cauldron right now and just focused more on the fact that it's beefing up these uh, Dogmoths. Mm -hmm. So the Orgmoth in a position to block the Rhino here. And Chandler, one card in hand. I believe it's a Yorgmoth. I think it's a Yorgmoth. Yeah, I think you're right, Riley. Super tough spot for Andrew, feeling like a really uphill battle. I mean, he's resolved four copies of Crashing for Falls this game, mm. and, and the game is still going on. That is not yeah. the greatest sign. Chandler's been able to, to answer all of them, some of them very neatly with Maelstrom Pulse and Legion's End. And others just by doing boring things like blocking and attacking. Chandler now, two cards in hand. One of them, I believe, is a Yorg Moth. Does have the Agatha's... Uh, does have the Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Yeah, Chandler debating an attack. I think he has to attack. Like, I don't really get how you can block here. You still want to end the game and not give Andrew forever and like just getting him low enough where, where you might be able to pull away with some lethal seems solid to me. Down to two. End step gone. Interesting. Andrew Upton does have the gone here. Wanting to make sure that the Yorgmoth wasn't there to be able to block. But with Chandler on 11, I don't see how Andrew is going to full lethal this turn. What has he got? I, uh, oh, actually, no, never mind. I was thinking that <laughs> I, was, I was getting really excited. There's so like, okay, the, the yeah. cogs are turning in Noah's brain, but no, yeah, okay. no, no. I saw that Chandler had uh, uh, a court of calling in his hands, and I was mm. thinking like maybe he could court of calling for blood artists, but you can't sacrifice Yagmoth to himself, right? Uh, I think it's sacrifice another creature, yeah, because if you could, he could have done a really cool play, but you know, you can't. You can't. Boo. Um, so we have the Rhino getting in with uh, Mutavolt. It's an attack for six. Chandler seems to be considering a cord here. Can cord for four. Is the cord a calling? Yep. And it will be for four. Let's see what Andrew has to say about that. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's got a counter. He just, just nods. Yeah, he, he got it. And it's going to get uh, Yorgmoth by the look of things. Or considering um, an endurance. 
Yeah, I don't think he has too many other options, really, than than those two at four. I mean, he could get a Shieldred, but I'm pretty, pretty sure he, he has he already played. Yeah, he already played the Shieldred this game, and I think he only has one in the in the yeah, seventy five. Yeah, in the good one. Yep. So, so it gets endurance. Yeah, I'm intrigued. I mean, I guess his his thought process here is I already have another uh, Yakumoth in my hand. Uh, so this endurance is just kind of bigger, and also you know he could he could just block the rhino, put a counter on endurance. I don't really probably know why uh, we won't shuffle Andrew's library back in. Oh, no, yeah. just going to discard or exile the uh, the shardless agent here. But uh, probably yeah, not probably not going to shuffle all of those crushing footfalls back into the library. I'd say. Yeah, probably not. If I was Maybe. Chandler, I might just decide to block the mute vault. To play around something that deals two damage, but maybe you don't need to. Okay, the rhino dies. The muta vault gets in for two. Chandler down to nine. Andrew up to two. Chandler just needs to turn that endurance sideways, and if Andrew doesn't have anything, he will win the game. Let's see. Excuse me. An attack, the subtlety, Yorgmoth, the post combat play. Subtlety flashed into chump block the endurance there. I'm gonna be honest with you, Riley. I saw Agatha's Soul Cauldron in these decks, and I was like, how is it how could this card possibly even be good? Like, like I get it, it's extra Yogmoths, whatever. It's it seriously impressed me this game, just based off a two cost card that gave a lot of stats. Um Yeah, yeah, it's dumped a huge amount of power and toughness onto the battlefield. And then in addition with, you know, like you don't see the the proliferate the sorry proliferate ability used every day on Yogmoth, but being able to just set up a bunch of counters on your creatures and then proliferate, like that is like a very serious ability. So Endurance shuffles Chandler's graveyard away. Yeah, it looks like this was in what's in your hand, but is there any argument to ever shuffle your own library or your own graveyard back in so you can get more rhinos? I guess it depends if you've got the, the agent in hand or something like that, but still. Yeah, I think there's a huge argument to doing something like that, Riley. I think that's a really heads up play. I think he just decided to to target Chandler because Chandler was trying to use the Soul Cauldron on one of his creatures and he didn't want him to be able to put a counter. Yeah, just just negating that uh, that counter there. All right. So we have Young Wolf now. In addition to this juiced up endurance and Yorgmoth both getting in, Andrew Upton activates his Muta Vault, but I think it's going to die before it gets the chance to block. I think with, so too. Uh, with the Yorgmoth plus Ooh, proliferate. proliferate. And Chandler, a hard fought victory for him. Andrew really, really made him earn that one. No, that was uh, that was quite a game of magic. Uh, the first one uh, was over a little a little bit quicker, but that game number two that had some twists and turns, some back and forth, and Andrew really, really turned the screws to uh, to make Chandler earn that victory, as I say. But uh, Chandler, at the end of the day, did a very good job to see off for the full four copies of the Crashing Footfalls. Yeah, just a valiant effort by both players. Honestly, Andrew really fighting his best through you know the amount of value that Chandler was just getting throughout that whole game, but. It's so rare to see a game where, you know, the, the, the Rhinos player resolves all four copies of their Crashing Footfalls and it's a back and forth game. So just, mm. just an impressive game in general, honestly. Yep. Well done indeed to Chandler and uh, a great result for him as we head towards the end of our um, uh, end of our coverage of day number one. We've still got one, one round to bring you, so don't go anywhere. But uh, Chandler Cox undefeated 8-0, and oh, so well done indeed to him. But it's not only him that is winning this round, my friends. You could be our next lucky winner thanks to Heavy Play, proud sponsors of this broadcast. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank Heavy Play for putting their money where their mouth is and supporting the highest level of competitive magic and broadcasts uh, and, and broadcasts of uh, magic around the world like this one. We are giving away $20 in store credit, $20. US dollars in store credit. The biggest giveaway of the day today. This is not for five or for 10 or for even 15 smackaroos, but an entire $20. Type Heavy Play into the chat. Earn yourself an opportunity to win one of uh, the many products that Heavy Play has to offer sleeves, deck boxes, dice boxes, play mats, all sorts of stuff. And uh, even if you're not one of our lucky winners today, head over to heavyplay.com. 10% off 
with code DENVER2024. They've got some terrific stuff over on the website there, Noah, and uh, uh, viewers would be uh, doing themselves a favour to go and check out some of the uh, the excellent, excellent products that Heavy Play has on offer. No doubt. Hey, and I mean 20 buckaroos for free. I'm I'm spamming heavy play in the chat as fast as I can. I don't know about yeah, you guys. And we and we've got the inside line to the people organizing the competition. So maybe we can we can rig the whole thing. Ooh. I'll split it with you, mate. I'll split it with you okay, 15 yeah. 5. Oh, oh I mean, yeah, that's fair. As long as you rig it for me, like that's probably yeah. five more than I would have won. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friends. Heavy play in the chat. Thanks once again to Heavy Play for supporting this stream. So important that we're able to uh, you know bring broadcasts like this to life uh and uh there there there's a lot more that goes into these streams than you think and they wouldn't be possible without partners like heavy play supporting us so thank you once again heavy play 10 percent off co uh, with coupon code denver 2024 be sure to head over and support the people who are supporting these streams all right that is that for round number eight my friends we're going to take a quick break on the other side of it our our ninth and final round of day one coverage from dreamhack denver we do hope to have your company as we round out the day's coverage but in the meantime, we're going to take a moment to get things set up, get things ready to go, and we'll be back, we'll be back with more magic on the other side of this. <laughs> 